Well, the U.S. is hardening its stance on TikTok. The Biden administration is reportedly demanding that its Chinese owners sell their stakes in the business or could face a ban in the U.S. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. For more on this, let's bring in Bernstein Internet Equity Research Analyst Mark Schmulik. Thank you so much for joining me this morning, Mark. So obviously a lot going on here with TikTok. I do want to first start with this push that's been made by CFIUS, the Committee on Foreign Investment in the U.S., ruling that the Chinese owners of TikTok should sell their stakes in the company or face this potential ban. What is your take on that strategy? Obviously, this is being used as a national security angle as a reason to ban TikTok. Yes, uh, thanks for having me. Um, you know, I'd say my, my first view on it is it's probably a high stakes game of chicken. Um, and what I mean by that is if we rewind a little bit uh, to when the Trump administration, uh, you know, attempted to get kind of TikTok spun off or sold off, uh, the Chinese government effectively put in a new law uh, banning the sale of IP. Uh, and, and so I believe CFIUS knows this, uh, you know, the, the administration knows this. And so effectively putting this ultimatum out there that's been reported, um, knowing full well that China can't simply divest uh, TikTok. And so I think we're entering into this very high stakes game of chicken around the application uh, where, you know, the, the path to pursue just an outright ban as a starting point uh, is likely off the table, given, you know, that users love it. Uh, they love to use it. And so you never want to alienate your voting base. Uh, and so I feel like that's how we've ended up at the point where we've ended up. So what is a realistic path forward here then for TikTok? Um, I think the most realistic pass forward is we just continue as is. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we continue to have these discussions and news flow about potential bans, uh, restrictions here and there. Um, you know, I know ByteDance believes strongly in their Project Texas uh, approach, working with Oracle. Uh, and so maybe there's some settlement that's reached at some point around security measures around where data stored, accessed, uh, and, you know, and how the algorithm effectively gets uh, deployed. Um, so I always kind of err on the side of path of least resistance as we continue forward, albeit with continued news flow. That, that seems to be, you know, the way regulation has so far uh, have affected many of the Internet names. Um, so, so that would kind of be the, the default. Uh, you know, if that doesn't occur, um, you know, I'd probably err on the side of a ban being slightly more likely than an actual spinoff. Uh, but but it's really hard to kind of underwrite either of those scenarios, given where we're at. And we really can't underest underestimate just how much TikTok really changed the game when it entered the market here. And in the Bernstein note, it says that TikTok ruined the Internet. Walk us into some of the mindset behind that commentary. Yeah, sure. Certainly a little bit, uh, you know, uh, clickbait as a title. But, um, you know, I, I think our view is twofold. One is it certainly changed the way we consume in the Internet, consume the Internet. And I think that's evident by the amount of short form video features embedded in pretty much every application, you know, these days, even Spotify kind of announcing it recently. Um, you know, and so that's kind of changed the format for how we consume Internet. We prefer video now. Uh, we prefer not to make decisions. So having an app open up where content is immediately push to us. Uh, but secondly, it also changes the economics of also how we consume content. And so, you know, where, where we went into in the note is trying to understand how do the economics work from a business model perspective of short form video, because it is more of a broadcast platform. Uh, it does lend itself well to more, you know, broad based advertising campaigns. Uh, but you're also watching video rather than simply kind of scrolling through and clicking on things. Uh, and so our view is it changes how we consume it, you know, but also the underlying economics of how Internet business models monetize. And even as we talk about the impact, when you look at what Facebook then started to do with some of its content creator funds with Instagram Reels, what YouTube was doing with Shorts as well, um, talk about really the stakeholders in this and the biggest beneficiaries if there is going to be a potential ban. Yeah, you know, it's uh, I, we actually have a market to take a look at where TikTok was banned, which is India. Uh, and what initially happened when TikTok was banned in India is you saw this kind of rise of effectively TikTok clones, you know, local homegrown TikTok clones. And, you know, while they're still around, uh, much of the behavior shifted towards these larger kind of multinational platforms. Uh, YouTube and Shorts is very dominant, you know, in India. Instagram certainly benefited and Snapchat did as well. Um, you know, so in terms of where the users go, uh, you know, if there was a ban, I, I think it's it, it's kind of, uh, uh, you know, 
easy enough to draw the reference to India and say, well, you know, likely the remaining incumbents benefit, uh, which is also why you see their stocks react positively to any news flow, um, you know, tied to a to a potential ban. Uh, I think they've all got very different angles uh, through how they're going about doing it, uh, be it are they going after creators? Are they embedding it into the core product versus a separate tab? So there are some of these more tactical things, uh, you know, but I think our, our kind of house view is that if there was a, a potential ban, you know, expect to see the, the local incumbents benefit.